Welcome back you beautiful people and in this episode I very quickly want to show you guys how to connect to a remote server make changes and uh, save those changes. So what we have done before in previous episodes was we were able to code locally on our system so we created an index.html file and that was local on our hard disk but in this case I want to show you guys how to connect to a remote server. So this of course requires you to have a remote server um, you can do this with uh, cPanel or with direct admin, um, but you can do this, but you would, rec if, if you do use cPanel or uh, direct admin, you will be required to likely use um, an SSH key, which we will not cover today, but hopefully I'll be able to cover that in another episode. In this case though, what we want to do is to be able to connect to a VPS or a dedicated server that has SSH already running. You can probably Google up what SSH is if you don't know about it, but basically most VPS servers with your private servers and also um, dedicated servers, they usually have SSH running. It's a very popular um, protocol that allows you to run commands and also upload and download files. So with that being said, the first thing we need to do is of course open up our VS code. And I want you to look, I want you to pay close attention to the bottom left because right now there's a you know there's a there's a few icons here and if you hover over it's green but uh, what we want to do is we want to install a special module that allows us to do remote connections and so to do that I have my uh, menu section on the right hand side but I think by default VS Code normally has these icons on the left hand side um, so just pay attention to the difference there and where we want to go is to our extensions. So we click on extensions icon, and then we want to search for remote-ssh. And when we do that, as you can see, there is a remote-ssh module. We need to click on it in order to get full details of this module. It's created by Microsoft, and basically it allows us to connect to remote servers. Now, in order to do this, we need to, of course, install it. Now, notice when I click the install button, I want you to look at the bottom left. When it gets installed, there's a new blue icon, it's blue-green, that appears on the left-hand side. This means that it is installed. Now, after we install it, we also, of course, have to configure it. You can go through the documentations, but I'm, you know, this is a crash course, so I'm going to do this really quickly so that you don't have to spend a lot of time reading the documentation. So we can close off this documentation for the time being. Of course, as I said, you must have a remote server already set up with SSH in order to do this. And so what we need to do is click on open a remote window. And there's a few options that are available here. There's connect to host, there's connect current window to host, and then there's open SSH configuration file getting started as the documentation. Okay, you might, you know, intuitively, you might believe that you want to use connect to host. Yes, you can. But what this will do is this will generally connect using a separate window. So it will open a separate VS code, which we don't want to do right now. What we want to do is use the same VS code. So we're going to click on connect current window to host. Now, as you can see, there's two options available here. There's add new SSH host, configure SSH host. Obviously, we want to click on the add new SSH host, but what I wanted to also mention is that this window gets populated, this section gets populated with all of your SSH hosts that you would have added. So if we add a new SSH host, what will happen the next time is when we click on connect current window to host, We'll get back here and it's going to have the new SSH host. And you'll see that in a few seconds. But let's continue on with clicking Add New SSH Host. Now it already shows you a bit of the instructions you need uh, to type in in here. You type in SSH space, your username, at the host name or the IP address of the server, dash A. In my case, I'll then type in SSH space. Username will be root, and this is the host name of my server. Now, to complete that, you would space dash A. However, because I'm running my SSH on a different port, I have to add in a little bit of extra code here. So, SSH normally runs 
on port 22. So that's the same as colon 22. That will specify the port, right? So your username at hostname colon and the port, right? Uh, in my case, I'm running on 21022. And so I have to put in that port. But you shouldn't have to if it's a standard SSH connection you're making, which is on port 22. You could just leave this out completely. And that will default to port 22. But in my case, it's a little different. So once I do this and I press enter, it's going to ask me where to store this configuration, this host that I uh, just added to the system. And you have two options on Windows. Um, the first option seems to be related to the specific account. So my specific account is system user. And so if I save it in this config file, it will only be available to my login, my logged in user, which is system user. Uh, the second one is um, a more generic one, which I believe is used for multiple users. So any user should be able to see um, the, the connection um, that is available with this one. So we really want in this case to use specific user, my specific logged in user here. So I'm going to select this one, this location. And this, of course, is going to change depending on your username that you have for Windows. So I'm going to click that. And now that I did that, as you can see, it said host added. And there's the option to open config or connect. Uh, because we don't need to adjust any settings, uh, any additional settings, we can just go ahead and forget about open config and click on connect. Now it's connecting. It's setting up the server and it's going to ask me for my password. And if we did this correctly, this is going to work by establishing a connection to the SSH server. It's a long password. After you that, you type the password, you press enter. Now, if you press enter and you, there was an error, it would pop up. It would tell you that there, there was an error. If all went well, you, what you should see is the option to, um, you should see yourself logged in. So there's actually a console here where I can actually type in commands to the server. And there's also an option to open folder. Now, sometimes when you do the login for the first time, it asks you if the, the, the operating system, what operating system you're running on the server. And usually for SSH servers, it's usually Linux. So make sure to select Linux. And it may ask you to accept a key. And so you should also, of, of course, accept the key. It may say continue and you click continue and then you get in here. Um, but this is how we know that we are connected now. So I can actually literally type LS here and I'll be able to run commands directly on the server side, which is nice. So things like top work here, where you can see this is the, this, some of the configuration, well, some of the processing, etc. that's happening. Uh, but what we're interested in is to open a folder. And in this case, I'm gonna click on open folder. And now you get this option here where you can choose which folder um, you want to open on the remote side of things. So you have to have a little bit of knowledge of Linux here as well. Um, but basically, you know, an Apache uh, web server would generally be at var www.html. In my case, I do some development in Drupal. So I'm going to click on my Drupal folder, web, modules, and there's a specific folder that I do development work on. So um, I'm going to open this up just to show you, just to demonstrate uh, that it works. So now that I've, now that I have, I've found the folder, I'm going to click OK. And then it's going to re-ask me for my password again. And this is because we haven't been using SSH keys, which will probably be covered in another video. So I'm going to retype back in my password. And hit enter. And now that I did that, once I successfully put me in the correct password, now I have the list of files on the right hand side. It might be, as I said, on your left hand side. And I can edit whichever file that I want. So I'm going to try to edit job output. And job output already has some information in it. Um, and here I could simply say test. And then I can click save. And there, in a few seconds, hopefully, I click it. Yes, in a few seconds, it's saved. So anytime you make modifications on VS Code, what you get is, of course, this dot that shows you, you made a modification. And anytime you click save, right now it's going to upload. So it's taking a few seconds to upload and then it turns to the X, which means it's already finished uploading. And that's pretty much how you work with 
uh, a remote file system using VS Code. I hope this helps you out. If it did, please like and please subscribe. Um, there's Oh, there's one more thing that I probably need to mention is sometimes when you open this folder for the first time, it asks you if you want to trust the folder. And you could, yeah, you could say, you could just checkbox that and say trust folder and you should be good to go. With that being said, thanks guys. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. I'll try to leave as much information in the description as well to, to help you guys out. Um, uh, but if you were just want to just, re, uh, just review the video a few times or pause the video between these steps and you should be good to go. Uh, thanks again and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.